Okay, in our experience with multiplying these things the other day, a binomial times a binomial usually gave us what kind of polynomial? A trinomial. Okay, usually the result was a trinomial. Yes, we had four terms initially, but when it simplified, it simplified into a trinomial. However, with this problem, uh, when we multiply it out, when we FOIL, we get 6x cubed minus 21x squared minus 10x plus 35. There are no terms that can be combined. There are no common terms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have to leave it like that. We end up with a four-term polynomial. Well, obviously we, we multiplied it out, so that must mean that in some way we can factor this. All right, so what we're going to look at today is how can we factor uh, polynomials that look like uh, this. And it's actually a method called grouping. So the yellow sheet that I gave you has the steps written out. Um, so we're going to go through it. Um, the steps, it, honestly, it's kind of hard to write out the steps in words, um, but I know that some people do like to have things like that to reference. So <clears throat> let's look at an example here. We have 15x cubed plus 18x squared plus 20x plus 24. Okay, so our first step is that we kind of pair off our terms. Okay, we pair off our terms. So we are looking at the first two together and we're looking at the second two together. So I'm going to try and keep this color coordinated for you. Okay, <clears throat> with the first two, we are going to figure out what the GCF is for those two terms. So between 15 and 18, what's the GCF? Three, we've got x cubed and x squared. So we've got to take out an x squared. Okay, so let's put what we've got left in parentheses. When we take out 3x squared, we're left with 5x plus 6. Okay, that's our first group. Let's look at the second pair. 20x plus 24. What is their GCF? Okay, 20 and 24 have a GCF of positive 4. When we take out positive 4, what are we left with? 5x plus 6. Now notice that binomial is common to both of these. That is what's supposed to happen. Okay, that's what's supposed to happen. Um, <clears throat> if those are not the same, then you've either done something wrong or it can't be factored this way. All right. Uh, so after that point, what we do is we take our two GCFs and they get put in a set of parentheses together, 3x squared plus 4, and then we list our common factor only once, okay, 5x plus 6, only once. That is how that expression factors. And with any type of factoring, you can multiply it back out to prove it to yourself, okay? Um, the reason why there's 5x plus 6 only shows up once in your final answer, and it's twice right here. <clears throat> the reason why grouping works the way that it works is because when you look at this expression in blue being a term, this expression in green being a term, they have 5x plus 6 in common, so it's like Let's look at another one. Let's look at 56n cubed plus 24n squared minus 35n minus 15. Okay. 56 and 24, what is their greatest common factor? Bigger than six. Eight. It is eight. 
between n cubed and n squared, they both have at least n squared. <clears throat> Excuse me. So inside of our parentheses, we're left with 7n plus 3. <coughs> now with our second pair, there's something a little different going on this time. The first term is negative. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anytime the first term in what you're factoring is negative, you need to pull out a negative, okay? And then between 35 and 15, our GCF would be five. <clears throat> so when we plug out and pull out a negative five, not plug, pull, we're left with seven N plus three. Okay, seven N plus three. Again, <clears throat> it's the same. So we can put our GCFs together and we list the common linear factor once. And that is the final answer. Okay, a couple more just to make sure we got the hang of it. Nine n cubed plus 10 n squared minus 15 n minus 20. Okay, for the first pair, 9 and 12, their GCF is 3. n squared, we're left with 3n plus 4. We've got another negative. We take out a negative 5 left with 3n plus 4. Our final answer is 3n squared minus 5 times 3n plus 4. Okay, last one. 2x <laughs> cubed plus 9x squared minus 8x minus 36. Now for this one, 2 and 9 don't have a common factor, right? Well, that's okay. okay. It doesn't, your numbers, your coefficients don't always have to have a common factor. We are going to take out an x squared. We are left with 2x plus 9. What is our GCF between 8 and 36? Yep, we're going to take out a negative. And 4. Okay, when we take that out, we're left with 2x plus 9. So we put our GCFs together, list our common factor. Now, I haven't mentioned this before now because it hasn't applied, but this one will factor a little bit more. Okay, this one will factor a little bit more because x squared minus four right here is the difference of perfect squares. So that will factor into x plus two times x minus two times two x plus nine. Okay, so <clears throat> when you're factoring by grouping, it doesn't come up very often but from time to time, uh, when you pair your GCFs together, you will end up with a difference of perfect squares, and you'll need to factor it first. Okay? Like I said, we haven't run into that yet. Um, all the rest of them, that's as far as they would factor. Okay, but you should check that really quickly uh, before you. You've just got a variable that's going to be your GCF. So pair the first two together, x squared plus 3x. They have an x in common. so. Your, your GCF factoring would be x times x plus 3. Pair the second two together. What do they have in common? K. They have K in common. Okay, they don't have a number in common. They have K in common. Um, so that's it. It's the same thing that we were doing. It's just they've got an extra letter in there instead of uh, numbers like our examples were. Okay. <coughs> Okay.
So finish with that one off.